Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D-Lo and I have another video for you guys. So I wanted to let you guys know that I am uh, today going to be doing my fourth fan casting video for my X-Men MCU TV series. And it's really fun. I'm going to be doing Beast. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, getting my stuff up. Hank McCoy, Henry McCoy, the Beast. Um, now to specify, uh, a lot of people are probably thinking, are we talking about the blue, uh, the blue beast, or are we talking about the white beast, Henry McCoy, the human form beast? Um, and for my TV series, I'm going to focus a lot more on human form beast, and eventually will build up into the story arc of the blue beast, because um, I think that a lot of the uh, a lot of the X Men. They have these really great stories that, that give them some serious, um, you know, there's character development there that I think would be missed if you don't take your time, if you don't build the reasons why um, Henry McCoy is, is struggling with his powers. I think X-Men um, X -Men, uh, First Class did a good job showing off um, Beast and his, uh, his struggles with wanting to be normal. And they really, they really humanized him and gave him those insecurities that I think worked really nicely. In my series, I want to do a similar thing, but I'm going to drag it out so that um, every character is going to have a specific story arc that is going to be um, critical for them in their TV series. And for, for Beast, it's going to be, um, does, he, does he try to reject or accept his mutation? And what does that do for him? Um, so I'm going to, long, long story short, I'm going to stick with the white beast as long as possible. And eventually they will become the blue beast. Um, and based on my character selections, that'll either be practical effects or CGI. And I, I think it's time to start delving into the realm of maybe a motion capture or CGI. But I'll, I'll get into the specifics um, of what kind of visual representation we'll have for the beast. Um, but let's get into this, okay? So right here I have Beast up here. We're talking about Hank McCoy. Some people who have already played the role. Um, Nicholas Holt, who played him in X-Men First Class through X-Men uh, Dark Phoenix. Just like I had mentioned before, we had Kelsey Grammer in X-Men The Last Stand. In X2, Steve, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but Bakic, ba Basic, ba <laughs> Basic. Bakic, I think Bakic or whatever, however you want to say it. This guy played him in X2 um, in just a quick cutscene that was showing him uh, at a news report or um, giving some sort of a briefing to the news, to the press. Um, George Souza uh, voiced him in the X-Men TV show in the 90s. And then also Michael Kopsa voiced him in X-Men Evolution. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into my first casting pick. My first casting pick is going to be Joel Egerton. Edgerton. <laughs> it's very hard to uh, say, but he is 44 years old. He is 5 foot 11. Um, you guys probably know him from like Red Sparrow, maybe from Bright, the, the um, movie with Will Smith, or also Warrior. This was one that really caught my attention. Back when I first saw Warrior, which is a UFC film, kind of it's got kind of like a, a Brotherhood, Rocky Balboa type of um, combined feel to it, but it's in the UFC. Um, and what it does is it combines Joel Egerton with Tom Hardy, and they play these brothers that are both extremely talented fighters. Um, and they both have different outlooks on life, different approaches, but they're both pretty much the best of the best. And both Joel Egerton and Tom Hardy beefed up majorly for this for these roles. And uh, in that in that moment, I was thinking to myself, "Gosh, this would be a really awesome Wolverine Beast combo." And Joel Egerton has the look. Um, he's not particularly large as far as height, um, being five eleven. But I think if you want to um, chalk up the massive uh, size growth to after he becomes the blue beast. You could have him be a really thick, uh, beefy boy with super strength and agility um, like Joel Egerton is. Very athletic, um, masculine build. I think he could be a good pick. 
and he is also older so you'll notice that in my casting um, for for Beast, it's going to be a little bit different as far as age range for all of my picks um, because depending on how you want to play the story, he could be a little bit closer to Professor X and kind of have that um, that edge of age, wisdom, experience to kind of help um, support his character in being that he's one of the smartest minds in the Marvel universe. So not not the top not the top tier, but he's up there along with some of the smartest minds up there. So he's my first pick. So next, uh, I wanted to just give you a quick visual. Of, this is him in bright um, with blue, uh, blue skin, blue makeup. Uh, we also have someone had done a side-by-side -side comparison here um, of, of Joel Egerton and Beast. It looks really nice with the beard here. Um, and I think that you could do a little bit more of like a, a cat-like look. Um, if you wanted we haven't had that in the films as of yet been very human-esque, but with a lot of blue hair or fur um, I think that this could be really cool Doesn't have to be that for me honestly, but it would be fun um, He's got a really strong, you know, like jaw forehead um, He's just got kind of a big feel and that's what you need with beast. You need someone that's got gigantic hands gigantic feet obviously those can be um, helped with prosthetics or just camera tricks or CGI even. Um, but it helps to have someone with a really strong frame. So then uh, in this image here, um, it's actually got a couple of my picks. I'll show you guys later. But uh, somebody had just done a side-by-side -side comparison of Joel Egerton here. Um, so I won't spend too much time on this because I've got a number of picks to get to. So next on my list, Derek Theller. Uh, Derek Theller was in Baby Daddy. He was also in um, Ninjak vs. the Valiant Universe, a comic book series done by Bat in the Sun and comicbook.com. And, uh, you know, Jason David Frank was in that. Um, uh, Michael Rowe was in that. There was a lot of good actors that were taking part in that comic book event. You should check that out. But also, he was he's really funny. Um, he plays a sweetheart really well, which Beast is actually quite gentle when he's not in combat. Um, gentle spirited and I think that that would be helpful he is one of the younger um, people on my list for uh, Beast sitting at around 32 years of age he is six foot five this would put him as tall as my tallest pick for Cyclops which was Army Hammer so alongside Army Hammer you could have two gargantuan human beings standing side by side next to a crew of normal sized people who will look a lot smaller um, just because of the sheer height of these guys so he's a, a really good pick for visual aesthetic um, he does have a, a rugged look he is kind of a little bit he's a little bit pretty like a little bit more of a pretty boy kind of um, he is very masculine if you look at his uh, physique so he does have a little bit more of a, a masculine look if you look at his fitness if you look at he's done some cosplay of course on his uh, show baby daddy um, this was him and his one of his co-stars doing uh, Wolverine, obviously, and Mystique. Um, then there's also, here's one of just him as Wolverine. You can see he's really beefy, um, but given that he's so tall, he looks a little bit more lanky um, just because of how freaking giant this guy is. Look at this, is him compared to probably what is, I'm guessing, a 5'10", 5 5'11 5 foot guy. Um, but yeah, he did some funny, silly cosplays. Um, now that he's older, I think this look right here looks really good with the beard. Um, I would have him grow out the beard to play, um, to play Hank McCoy because he looks very young with short facial hair. So I would, I would want him to get a little bit more rugged. Um, and this was him in, as Exo Man of War in that comic book event I mentioned earlier. So those are, that's my thoughts there. Um, you could do more practical effects with a giant like this guy, but I think it would still be good to do maybe some some motion capture and just um, Get a little bit more of a CGI representation here Here we go. So let's go to the next one the next person on my list after Derek Deller who is 6'5 32 uh, years of age is Dean Kane. Dean Kane is someone you guys probably already know as Superman um, from the Lois and Clark TV show. Also, uh, he played uh, Kara Zor-El's dad on Supergirl. Not not um, not her Kryptonian father, but her Earth adopted father. 
And so um, he is uh, very well known for a lot of different things. He's been in a ton of Hallmark films um, in recent years, but he's also done films like God's Not Dead and Gosnell, um, a lot of political films recently. Um, but, you know, everybody loved him as uh, Clark Kent in Lois and Clark. And he is thick and he is big. He is six feet tall, which is not... It's not Derek Deller's height, but it's pretty good stature. And he is incredibly broad-shouldered. Um, these are some pics from when he was younger. But even when he's older, take a look at this. You know, just look at the, the thickness on this guy. And he's not fat either. He's just freaking huge. He's jacked. And um, I think, you know, his facial hair uh, would, would go well. I think he actually has the face that would that would meld really nicely if you wanted to do some sort of um, the, the cat-like representation of Beast. Um, but yeah, he's a savage. And I would really like to see him back on the big screen. It would be really great to get him over in Marvel's hands. I don't know if his role is done or not in Supergirl, but it would be great to have him um, over on the Marvel side um, and just get him to play Beast. Because he's got, he's got the dimensions, especially now that he is uh, 52 years of age. He's got the thickness. He's got the dimensions for playing Hank McCoy, um, even prior to being uh, blue and even more mutated. So I think that would that would serve him well. I love Dean Kane. I think he would be a great pick. A um, little bit of partiality, but I think he also fits, and I think there's enough reason there to support that that uh, suggestion. So let me know what you guys think. Is that is he too is he too old or would he fit right in the pocket of being kind of more of a peer with Professor X, whereas the others are more students? Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Okay, next up on my list is uh, probably tied for my number one pick here um, is David Harbor. Okay, so David Harbor, you guys know him um, from Stranger Things. He was in Suicide Squad. Um, he was also uh, He's also now playing Hellboy, and man, does he look good. So let me let me just show you. This guy is my ideal pick, okay? Uh, David Harbour is six foot three, two inches shorter than my tallest pick, but right there close to my tallest pick for Cyclops, which is Army Hammer. So, and look at his face. He's got that face that just looks like you could you could put that slimline mask right here over the bridge of his nose, cover up the top, just eye holes, and then the jaw sticking out. You'd have his hands and his legs. Uh, his hands and his feet open exposed just like the classic costume. I think he would be a perfect pick for that um, But he also is gruff. He's very gruff. I loved him in Stranger Things I think he's gonna be a great Hellboy based on the trailers and based on what we know about his acting career But let me go ahead and jump ahead to this so you can take a take a gander at this freak show. Look at this. I love this guy Look at how freaking jacked he is Look at this I want to show you something. Look at this. So, uh, he's notoriously kind of he 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 has played you know some like slob type of individuals like where he's just really unkempt. He's played some cleaner cut people. Um, I think that he would have a really nice balance, uh, a good mix of experience to play Hank McCoy. Look, some people are even fan casting him to play uh, Cable. I would disagree with that casting, but it's not the end of the world. So, um, but anyway. As far as him playing Beast, and this is what I referenced earlier, is that I picked Joel Egerton, and I also have David Harbour here to play um, Beast. And I think he would be a great choice. He's got the stature. He's got the thickness. Um, he's, he's gruff. He's got the personality. But he can also play a very caring individual. If you guys saw Stranger Things, he is gruff. He is kind of like falling apart as a person. But at the same time, I think that he is also a good choice um, to play uh, Hank McCoy. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead now. Next on my list. Oh yeah. And just to recap, he's 43 years of age and six foot three. I think he's perfect. Um, next up Toby Kebble. So I might get some flack for this, but please hear me out on this. He's 36 years old, which is younger than most of the picks on my list, but, um, he's also six foot two, good stature, close to most of my picks for Cyclops. But more importantly than that, talking about having somebody who, who can really get into the beast mode, okay? Um, look at his freaking resume, okay? He's in 
Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Kong Skull Island, uh, Warcraft. Um, he plays these really huge individuals. I'm not going to mention. Actually, I will mention Fant Four Stick, but let's get into that at towards the end. So take a look at this. Look at him. He's he's one of the foremost um, successful and and well re uh, best reputable uh, motion capture artists in the industry today, next to say Andy Serkis. Um, he is the best. And he look at this. This is a, a couple images from some of his notable characters from Warcraft, where he played. If I'm not mistaken, he played Duratan, and he also played um, Caesar in Planet of the Apes. This guy is a legend. Okay. Um, that's Andy Serkis doing Caesar, but um, but he's you know he's been uh, in Kong Skull Island. Um, he's just a fabulous actor, but more importantly, he he knows how to go beast mode. He knows how to be a savage, and as you can see, you don't have to be the thickest dude on the you know in the weight room in order to play the thickest guy in the weight room. So with motion capture and CGI, you can do something like they did for Warcraft with the beast character. And that's honestly something I would love to see. So with Toby Kebbell, um, even though he, you know, he was forced to, well, not he forced, he took the role, but he took a role not knowing what the outcome really truly would be. Fan four stick was a huge flop. I, I hated it. <laughs> and I hated what they did with Doom, but I didn't hate Toby Kebbell. Toby, as an actor, you, you only have so much to work with, right? So you have so much, uh, you, you have a script, you've got a story, and then the director has a direction they want to go with the actual character you're playing. You basically say yes or no to taking the role, and then you're given the, you're given the rest of the script, you're given the direction, and then they put the movie together however they want. He didn't really fit the bill for Doctor Doom, but I think they picked him because they knew they were going to do some motion capture. And they knew he's great at motion capture, so they kind of dropped him in this role. Unfortunately, it wasn't a great role for him. And I think that um, Fant Forstick dropped the ball on, on Doom entirely and on the Fantastic Four entirely. But obviously, Marvel can, could stand to reuse certain actors. Like, for instance, Michael B. Jordan. They, re, they took him from Human Torch, which he was poorly casted as. He should never have been the, the Human Torch. He's not right for that role. And uh, it, just, it just doesn't work. But... They they sh they took him and they said he's a great actor. We can do better. They put him as Eric Killmonger and now he's almost everybody's favorite villain, right? So, um, or at least top three or four. And so now, with Toby Kebbell, I would like to see him recast as Hank McCoy. Give him the opportunity to play Hank, um, and uh, and then allow him to go beast mode with with motion capture and CGI. I think that would be fantastic. That would be the best possible outcome. Because just, I mean, if you just look at this guy's resume, can he play a beast or what? Just look at this. You see that? It's amazing. You know, all these talented actors out here doing doing motion capture, they could definitely pull that off. So that that's my take for Toby Kebbell. Now let's, uh, I'm going to recap on his stats, basically. He's six feet two inches and he's uh 32 years old so that basically summarizes the last part of of my top five that right there is my top five um so the top five are joel egerton uh derek deller dean kane david harbour and toby kebble and that is the last of the five i have two i wanted to just poke at really quick um robert kaczynski who played in True Blood, Pacific Rim, also in Warcraft. He was also, um, I think he played uh, uh, Orgrim. He played Orgrim in in uh, Warcraft. But he's 35 years old, 6 feet tall, so not the tallest. A little bit in that younger range, but he's got the look. And so this is kind of what he looks like. He did a great job in Pacific Rim. He played more of a cocky jerk in that one, but honestly, I think that he could play... He could play Hank McCoy. I think it would it would be a, a little bit outside of what we typically see him do, but it shouldn't be too hard to be genuinely caring and nice, and then also be able to beast out and go full rage mode. So I think he would be great. He's got the physique for it. He's just you know a little bit on the shorter side, but again, nothing some CGI and motion capture can't fix once you go blue. Um, then lastly, Travis Fimmel. These are this is my last bonus one right here. So he was from he was Ragnar in Vikings 
and Lothar in again Warcraft. A lot of Warcraft characters in this in this casting, unintentionally entirely, but they all seem to fit this bill. Um, so he's six feet tall, 39 years old, and check this out. So most people are fan casting him to play Wolverine right now um, because of his roles in uh, in Vikings and as Lothar, but when I saw him play Lothar, I saw him play someone that's genuinely caring, that has good leadership, but um, you know, I, I wanted to see him play someone a little bit closer to a kind leader like Hank McCoy, like Beast. And so I think he would be able to do that. Um, maybe not as well as some of the other actors on this list, but I think it would be great. So that's all I wanted to show. Um, as well as, oh my gosh, how did this get there? <laughs> wow, look at that. This is the this is which one's the actor that played Beast again? Oh yeah, it's this one. No, this one's my brother. <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. Uh, and then also, uh, he's got a good resume cosplaying as the Hulk in the past. So that's all I wanted to do there. But let's go ahead and flip this back. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know down below which of these actors you want to see play Beast, and uh, make sure to like share, subscribe, and if there's an actor outside of this list that you wanna see play Beast, let me know down below as well. I love that conversation. So you guys, make sure to subscribe if you haven't and turn on notifications so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. You guys rock. I will see you guys next time right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.